What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, and tonight I have a very, very special guest for you, the incredibly accomplished J.F. Caron. Hi, J.F. How are you this evening? Very good. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on the channel. This is wonderful. So uh, for people that have, you know, been living under the proverbial rock or uh, newcomers to the channel or to the sport, can you kind of introduce yourself and uh, most importantly on my channel, brag about your accomplishments a little bit? Oh, uh, you know, uh, 2021 will be my 17th season in strongman sport <laughs> a long time ago i started in 2004 i'm already nine time canada strongest man and my best result uh, i have many international podium but i make the podium last year in world strongest man for third place uh, and also uh, i was in top five since uh, five years now yeah, as far as Canada's strongest, man, I think that aren't you, you have the distinction for being the only one to ever win every event. Is that right? Yes, I did it in 2016, I think. It was in Ontario, a little village named Dubreville. And in that time, it was eight events, two days contests, and I won uh, all events of the competition in that year on 14 athletes. And it was also special because this year I came first, Jimmy Paquette came second place, and Vincent Lapointe came third, and we trained together, all three. Oh, wow. That's and interesting. We made the podium. Yes, it was a very, very good uh, edition that, that year. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. Just out of curiosity, geography-wise, how close are you to Quebec City? Uh, I live uh, very close to Quebec City. I'm just on the, the south side of the St. Lawrence River. I'm 15 minutes to, to the city now. Uh, and my gym, uh, it's localized in the Quebec City. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was there years ago with my wife and uh, we stopped in Montreal and then Quebec City in the same trip. And Montreal is beautiful, but Quebec City is European. Like, it's just yeah. a, a different feeling. It's incredible. incredible. Yeah, this is the oldest oldest city in North America, you know, and a lot of historic uh, monuments are there in Quebec. And at least the most of the tourists come to Quebec City. It's a little bit different since Montreal is a smaller city, but you have uh, more historical stuff. Yeah, Quebec City is kind of half and half, right? There's a little bit more modern up on the mountain and then the old cobblestone sort yeah. of area. Yeah, yeah, and also the biggest city with uh, this like wall of uh, of granite around the, the old city. You know, it's the only place uh, in America is like this. It's very uh, special. You have a lot of cannon <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yes. It's a very beautiful city for the people coming to visit Canada. Yeah, one day I'll have to come up and visit you. I want to see the city again, and we'll drop by the gym. Yes, you're welcome. All time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, I typically ask straw men, like, do you do this full time or do you have sort of a day job, quote unquote? You run your own gym, right? Yes, I run my own gym. I run also uh, WRPF Canada Federation in powerlifting mm -hmm. and uh, Canadian Strongman Circuit too. Then we have a lot of show in... Uh, bah, since last year, it stopped because the, the pandemic situation. But normally, we have around 12 to 15 shows on TV here in uh, in Quebec on the, the biggest uh, sport channel. Then all the pro compete uh, in that event uh, all around the season. And normally, the season finish with Canada's Strongest Men Contest. Interesting. So you mentioned pro. What how What is the journey to become pro in Canada? Because I know I've spoken to some... European competitors, uh, for example, Donna Moore, and they were saying over there, there isn't really a concept of pro like there is in the U.S. What is the concept yeah, yeah. in Canada? Yeah, uh, now the concept, we follow the Strongman Corporation system in Canada is exactly the same. Then the winner of the amateur tournament in the year became pro. Or Like last year, we give three pro cards, then those guys switch to the strongman circuit but uh, in the past many guys like me like uh, jimmy packet and all the the old strongman just have a free pass to a pro status because we never compete in amateur level uh, the 
the amateur federation is pretty new. They start in 2014. Okay. Then when we start the Strongman circuit with Mike Saunders in 2014, uh, I think he give around 15 spot to the pro, then the, all the best athlete in Canada with a lot of experience. And after that, you have to qualify to become a pro and earn a card. Then uh, we follow exactly the same weight category than the Strongman Corporation use. But uh, at the pro level in Strongman Circuit, it's not like uh, Strongman Corporation. Then it's no weight class. We don't have 105 pro or, you know, 90 kilo pro. In, in Strongman Circuit, is uh, everybody together. But we have some guys like Isaac Mays co competing in 105 sometimes. But he's, he's strong enough to compete with the, the guy of the pro circuit. But a uh, few guys have the pro 105 status, but it's because they compete in U.S. also. Got it. Okay. You understand? But we, we, not, we don't have enough athletes. You know, this year, all pro will be invited to Canada's Strongest Men contest. We'll be, we must do this uh, at the end of July, 31 and 1st August, two-day show, because we have no qualification. It's not possible to organize contests, but we organize just Canada's Strongest Men competition this year. And it's uh, with maybe no crowd, it's just catch for the TV, you know, but brutal contest. 10 events on, in two days for five shows, five thirty minutes in the, the sport channel. Wow. Is there any way for us to watch that from the U.S.? Uh, yes, because when the, the, the sport channel broadcast this, we put on YouTube. Ah, on Cinemedia okay. TV channel, you, you can find on YouTube on Cinemedia point dot TV, sorry, uh, and you can find all the Strongman Circuit show from the past. All is that there. would be fantastic. Now I'm yeah, going to yeah. be up all night. <laughs> yeah, exactly the the the, <laughs> the same than you can see in TV because we are broadcast just on the the TV channel in Quebec than the French channel. Right. TSN is the English channel, and we don't have spot in TSN yet, but we work on that. But at the at the moment, we are just on RDS. It's like the ESPN brand, you know, in Quebec. It's, it's like similar, but right. uh, it's the biggest sport channel in, in Quebec and Montreal. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of TSM before. They do a lot with pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah, a lot. A lot. In past, we have some spot in TSN, but uh, we... Bah. It's a few years ago. I think we have to go back in 2011 or 10, maybe. But uh, TSN, I have no strongman anymore. But uh, we work on that in 2019. But we don't have show last year. Then we have to, to restart to, to talk with them. They are based in Toronto. But uh, the problem is always the, the money, you know, because RDS and TSN don't produce any show. I have to produce the show. I pay for TV crew. Oh. And they take the show, and we like it's a like a bargain between some publicity free, and they pass the show. Then you have to find sponsor, but it's not easy. But TSN has more money than, than RDS, and they don't work. Also, with, I don't know why. With the same like uh, camera, it's a different type of camera you need. That I will need two crew to catch the same show for two channels. Then it's wow. a big problem, but we work on that for, for the next year. I cross my figure for 2022 will be a normal year. <laughs> yeah, hope. me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, what you said about 10 events, that sounds really interesting. I'll bet you Big Laws would love to hear that. He, he's a proponent of more events so you can get a more well-rounded idea of who's the strongest. Yeah, but you know, we do, do it a lot of time in Canada. Yeah. Okay. In the past, Fortissimus was like that. Also, when uh, before the Warwick Strongman Contest became an Arnold uh, tournament, it was 10 events too, you know. Yeah. Uh, it was a very, very hard contest. I think Warwick, uh, it's one of the hardest contests in the world because the two-day show in the past was 10 events and very heavy. And sometimes maybe too heavy. I see many guys from other countries get injured in that uh, contest. But it's one of the biggest crowd we ever seen in Strongman. Sometimes we have uh, around 10,000 people each day watching the contest. Wow. That is crazy. You know, Strongman is very popular in Quebec because 
in Quebec history, strawman is very important. Since Louis here, in each generation, we have a top level athlete, you, you know, worldwide. Then uh, it's why all the people love to watch the contest. And every, sometimes it's not a contest. We don't just do a small demo in Quebec City. It will be full all the time. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, right now you're top level in the world, and so is Maxime. So it's uh, yeah, yeah. well, Canada is well represented. Yes, of course, Maxim improved a lot in the last two years. And I think uh, I train him now. You know, I help him with training. Oh, and yeah? I think uh, it will be very difficult to beat this guy uh, in World Strongest Men this year. He will be, he have a chance to reach the final, I'm sure. Last year, it was in good shape. It was mm -hmm. strong, but not lucky. You know, he have to fight Tom Stoltman and Stones. But still, Maxim made the... Right the second best stone run of all athletes, mm -hmm. then I think this year it will be, uh, you have a good chance to, to go in the final. He's in really good shape at the moment. Still, we have two months to prepare, but uh, he can surprise a lot of athletes. For sure. I, if I remember right, I'm trying to think back to World's Strongest Man last year on his stone run. Didn't he hit the lip of the platform? Or, he got unlucky with the stone, if I remember. He was doing very well. Yeah, not, he, he was not lucky, but you know, the plan was, okay, you cannot take your time. You understand? You have to fight Tom Stoltman. Then you go the fastest as you can, and if you miss the last one, you know, doesn't matter. Right. If you take your time and you did it, you will not beat him anyway then go fast as you can he make really fast run but he slipped on the 200 kilo the last one yeah but uh maxim improved and he trains stones every week since january now okay <laughs> follow him he trained really hard because you know war strongest man is a different contest last year it was his first time he was nervous for sure it's pretty new it's different to all other contests in the world you know because you have so many time to wait and wait and wait and when you have to go you must be ready really quick you have no momentum sometimes the tv stop you it, it's very different you know and it's all about stones because it's strong enough to make top three and if you're not good in stones you have no chance in the world's strongest man to reach the final for sure then it's the most important event to train for that contest and Maxim uh, improve a lot. And he trained now, I think, with a uh, 210 kilo, Oof. 460 pound stones for repetition. Then it will be not the same Maxim this year. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge stone. That yeah, is a yeah, huge stone. Wow. Yeah, I mean, so we were talking about pro cards earlier. So for you, was it when, when you were coming up, it was just open? You kind of just kept uh, winning events until you got noticed enough to um, to get invited to Worlds? How did you how did you get invited to Worlds the first time? Uh, in the past, in Canada, we have two spots. I, I made my first World Strongest Man in 2008 because I came in second place in Canada's Strongest Man contest. Okay. Canada has all the time two spots normally. Then uh, in 2008, I go. 2009 and 2010, I don't go because I came third in 2009. Then Louis-Philippe Jean and Christian Savoy was invited. Uh, in 2010, I think just Christian Savoy go to Sun City in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I go to 2011, I won. I'm champion since 2011. Then I all the time get my invitation to War Song S Man. But anyway, when you make the final, it, it, he invite you, you know, normally. I see, I see. I normally, and I work hard to get another spot because after 2010, we, we lose one spot for Canada. And uh, in 2017, finally, they invite Jimmy Paquet. And now Maxim have his spot too. But, you know, you we always, like, uh, provide good athletes in Canada. Yeah. Then those guys like Maxim and Jimmy, earn the spot because there was good results in other international show then it's not a gift you know <laughs> and right, right. really good result too then i hope the two spot for canada will be uh, continue in the future because you know i see last year and this year you have like eight americans and eight guy from uh, united kingdom then it's supposed to be a worldwide contest. I think it missed me maybe some country, but I know many good guys in the US. I think few guys was forget to to compete this year. Yeah, many strong guys in the USA. Same thing in England. 
then it's you know they, they have to choose 25 guys but uh, in my opinion i prefer to see more country represent yeah big laws was saying the same thing on his channel that uh and and he's british and he thinks there's too many british guys there so um i think the one that he thinks was missed is the one that i agree that was missed is Irvin toots i, I would love to see Irvin toots at worlds Yes, yes, because Irvin, but you know, Irvin was injured last year and he, he cannot prove how he's good. In yeah. that contest, it's maybe why they put Irvin in reserve, but Rono also deserves his place in Warsaw against men. Yep. And also many guys, I think you have to to invite more Europeans from different countries. I think maybe go back to 30 at least like in the past was not a bad idea too right but uh, you know i'm not the boss of img but one thing is sure that show is produced by cbs in the us channel 5 in england mm -hmm. it, it's why it's why you have many athletes from those countries <laughs> right yeah <clears throat> that makes sense so yeah. kind of besides maxime who do you think is the uh, the big surprise to do well this year at worlds uh, in my opinion, but well, I will say Kevin Ferris, but Kevin was not a surprise. It was a surprise last year, but this year may be not so surprising because now everybody says it is very strong, you know, and he improved. I think deadlift was not a, one of his best events, but I see a few deadlift from him on social media and improved a lot that lift then kevin will be a really tough guy to beat also travis mayor came back yep uh, travis have a good result last weekend in russia mm -hmm. and you know travis is experienced guy is also really good in stones then it will be not surprising if he reached the final and this guy is very complete it's one of his like an athlete is a kind of athlete like me you know very complete always in the top five never finish very far in lineup you know right. then i think travis will be will be maybe in final also last year evan singleton was injured then he missed the final because this injury i mm -hmm. think that he, he, this guy must be in, in the final he trained really hard he improved him uh, a lot he has a lot of uh drive a lot of passion Evan yeah, yeah. tries very hard yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not the strongest guy on static movement like squat and deadlift but overhead is really good good grip and he's really good on the events like mm -hmm. farmers yoke stones throwing all that kind of is very good truck pool also is very good for him uh i think this guy can be top five in final yeah. depending what's the event we have no idea also, the Stoltman brother will be very strong, but uh, with the I line... Think, uh, just from a, from multiple shows I've seen recently, Trey Mitchell looks very strong. Yeah, Trey, Trey is very strong. You know, it's depending what kind of event they have. But uh, for the shot classic, I said before the contest, Trey will finish five. Top five, for sure. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, it, it, because he replaced Robert Oberst. Right. You know, in shot classic. And I, I said to to three, I will prefer to compete against Robert because it's easier to beat than you because <laughs> I know Tre is very strong on log, strong in deadlift, you know, very good in stones, not bad in dumbbell, and he proved is static, statically really really strong, and it's very impressive to see that guy because he never used any equipment. Last year in World Youngest Man, he go for squatting. He, I think he did ten or eleven reps. Just in sleeve, no suit, nothing. <laughs> he put nothing in flat shoes. He go to squat, wow. really, really strong. And I think it's bigger again now. And last year in shot last six, he pressed 200 kilo, very easy. He almost beat Luke Stoltman on log. Yeah. He was really close. He was by far the second best on log in that contest. But it was for him like a 25 pounds PR because he never tried more at home. Wow. Really surprising for me. But uh, if Trigo in final is always dangerous, it's very, very strong. Just, I think maybe just the grip is not so good for him because he's right. young. He has to, to work on the, on the grip, you know. It's a long time to, to become really strong on the grip normally. 
And uh, it's almost the same lineup, but uh, it will be interesting to see what kind of shape the guy can have. But uh, with no, not so much competition, the, the guy have more time to train. Huh? Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, it will be interesting. But one one thing is sure, in my opinion, the level will be harder again than last year. Yeah. I mean, what, so one thing I'll ask the master of the deadlift, what did you think of Trey's deadlift technique at Shaw Classic last year? I, I don't want to say it was surprising, but he looked very composed, like almost like Brian Shaw doing a deadlift, like very composed and focused. And I said, wow, this guy looks like he's been here a thousand times. What, what did you think? Yeah, Trey have really good technique. They have very strong legs, very strong lower back section. And uh, I think if he pull more like in training partial deadlift, because it's very strong from the ground and you need power from ground because on the armor tire deadlift, the bar is like 13 and a half inches height. Mm-hmm. Then you have to have a good start also. To bend the bar before right. lifting, but with if Trey train more partial, I think it, it will be dangerous this year in shot classic on that event. I think uh, on 1100 and more is possible for him because, sorry, last year he did all attempt. <laughs> <laughs> I think like nine or ten attempt on deadlift because nobody knows because many guys I never tried this bar. And okay, I'm not sure I, I will be do each lift. And it was also cold a little bit inside in this uh, garage gym of uh, Brian. It's why many guys uh, wear the long pants and it was a little bit cold and you want to stay warm, you know, when, when uh, you lift all the time. But I think this year the bar will start heavier for sure. 830 was too light. And it will be interesting because now the guys have the strategy to skip some lift and they know what they are capable. Uh, it will be interesting, but the young guns like like Trey, Novikov, Tom, he pushed. They, those guys push really hard, the, the old guy like me. <laughs> and I need to work my butt off and uh, work very hard in the gym if I want to continue to follow and beat this guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm older than you, so you're still young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Trey, if I remember correctly, did 1,040 or 1,080 at Shaw Classic. 1,080. 1,080, yeah. So compared to you, not high, but compared to everybody else, very, very good. Yeah, it's, it's a really good lift. But, you know, some people watch those lifts and they was not very surprised about the, the lift. They could, but don't forget that, you know, all the best lifter in the world pull on that bar in Arnold Classic in the past. Okay. You can compare. Some people wrote some. I, I wrote some comments, you know, on the social media. And many people say, oh, Ideal can pull 30. No, Ideal do it one time. He did 1100. That's it. It was maximum lift. You know, Thor did less than 1100 on that bar. It was exactly the same thing. Then you can compare all the best athletes in the world pull on that bar, and nobody pulled 1200. You know. Right. Did you ever, did you pull on that bar before? The, Never. Uh, the okay. I I use the bar, just the bar, because you remember that video when I go to train with Brian in 2018. Yes. We use that bar, but with regular plate. Right. Okay. It's not the same, but I was no idea when I came to the shot last week and tried this, but I know it's maybe a good position for me for deadlifting. And my deadlift was very, very high last year in October, uh, sorry, in December. Then I have the goal to pull big number, but I have no idea how it's working. But finally, it's working very good for, for me. I have very good back power, and mm-hmm. you need back power to pull on that bar. Yeah, you were very, very smooth. I mean, to be fair, the only rep that looked like you had any effort was the last one, and I think that was, what, 12.02, if I remember? Yeah. When I pulled 10.40, the first attempt with four tires, it's feel really easy for me. And I said to Brian, I think I have 1,200 in me. And he started to laugh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything is not possible. I will show you. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> I, I, I find my limit at 1,200. <laughs> it, was, it was funny, but uh, I think uh, many guys like Terry Holland said to me, it's one of the most impressive things he, 
you have so in Storm and Contest. Uh, oh, half the world would say that. Absolutely. There's no no question. Um, what? So when you go from three tires to four, there's more flex in the bar, right? So how um, how much of a difference does it make when you first go to four tires? Is it like is it easier than the last weight on three tires, or close to the same feeling? Yes, yes, it's easier for me. But if you are on maximum, uh, I, I'm not sure, you know, because the people think it's easy to bend and pull, but you have to, you need a good power to bend the bar, just bending. But uh, of course, if I I have to do again, I will start on four tires because uh, it's different pull than the, than three tires. It's why also we see a lot of guy in the past miss the deadlift in Arnold Classic with a weight over thousand pounds, but three tires. Okay. I think it, 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 maybe an attempt around 960, 970, and you jump to four tires, it will be okay. But if you try example 1030, it's three tires, it's a lot harder than 1040 with four. Right. You, you understand because you have more bending, but the the feeling is very special. It's hard to to explain how it works, but it's totally different to all other kind of deadlift. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and shout out to Jerry Pritchett as well. Like uh, he, I, I gotta say, Shivlikov is known for giving maximum effort when he does things, and Jerry got into that category for me on that lift. Like he he just. He gave everything he had to try to match you, and it was very, very impressive to watch. Yeah, yeah Jerry was. I I know before we start, Jerry was big was be my biggest rival on that event. I was sure because Jerry was very strong in deadlift in that time, and because he have a better start from ground. Example: If I compare him to Adam Bishop, I know Jerry is stronger to start from ground okay. than Adam, and you cannot use a suit also. That I, I was sure Jerry and Jerry already used that bar in the past because he competed in Arnold Classic in, in, Arnold. in 13 and 14, I think. And the and he gave me some tips to how, oh, yeah? how working with, with that bar. And it will be a, it was a very good battle. And we're cheering for each other because we have no crowd there. Then all I have <laughs> for each other. But it was a great moment, and I will remember the that competition uh, uh, all my life. And I have to, to say too, uh, the Shot Classic was, in my opinion, my best performance ever in all contests. Interesting. Yes, and I compete almost 300 strongman competition now. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, because well, see, I, I make no mistakes there. And it was uh, really my best performance. I, I was really happy about this contest. We'll see if you can match that performance this year at the Shaw Classic. It's going to be very nice. He has yeah. a, a very great facility this year. Yeah, but I think it will be very hard to beat the record this year because we have already the events and the lift will be the first event on the second day. And we have a squat for reps on the day one, mm -hmm. then a super yoke. Then uh, two other events. I don't remember. I think a max log and uh, a throwing maybe. But uh, after a squat for reps, you have to do max deadlift. Uh, I'm not sure I can beat my <laughs> my, my weight of uh, last year, but we'll see. Uh, I have yeah. no idea. As long as no one else can, you're you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you know you it's a good day for you and. Yeah, their energy is in the room, and uh, you have to pull. That's it. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean, speak, speaking of great deadlifters, what do you think about the rise of Bobby Thompson recently? He's deadlifting some big numbers. Yeah, yeah. I don't see any video of training of Bobby, but Bobby did good deadlift uh, last year in Arnold Classic, around, I think, 925. And elephant bar is not easy. You know, people think it's very flexible bar, but it's not. Okay. It's a 32 millimeter bar. It's because everybody put thousand pounds <laughs> on that bar. Is bending. But if you do just 800, it's very, very stiff bar, you know? Right, right. I see many people talking about that bar, but nobody try because you cannot try this bar. Just in Arnold Classic final in Columbus, just 10 yeah. guys try it. Then uh, it was really good. And I think it's better with suit also. <laughs> 
then I think thousand pound is possible for him at the moment from the ground. Yeah. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a competition here in the U.S. in Kentucky in January, and uh, there was it, it was a lot going on. There was Masters Nationals, a strongman contest, and Highland Games all in the same arena, mm-hmm. and it was a, a dirt floor. So I don't know if you've you've heard about this one. Uh, Bobby was yeah. there, and the, the other pros, Marcus Crowder was there, Stan Carradine, um, Wesley was there, but he was doing a record breaker. Um, who else? Did, who am I missing? A Travis was there. So the mayor was there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I actually did the uh, the after show for that on my channel, and um, on the deadlift, Bobby was the only one to make it to the end. Uh, there were unfortunately some misloads. So uh, you know, with all that going on, it's difficult to kind of keep everything in line. And there were a couple misloads, and uh, Travis ended up with an inadvertent PR. So uh, it was a, a nine inch deadlift for eight hundred pounds. Then there was a uh, an eighteen inch. I, f- I think it was eight eighty and then a, uh, a car deadlift. And so it was actually the promoter's car. And so um, the 800 was misloaded to 879. And so when uh, Travis went to pick it up, he said, this, I must be having an off day. What's going on here? And uh, apparently by the end of the day, since it was a dirt floor and the weight kept sinking, it became a two-inch deficit deadlift uh, on top of it all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Bobby was the only one to make it to the car. Yeah, yeah. now Bobby is really strong statically. Uh, if you want to have good results in the future, I think that you have to train more the, the events like stones, mm-hmm. you know, throwing. You need more agility, you know, on that type of event. It's why it will be hard for him to to reach the World Strongest Man final, example, because you have to have good performance in stones all the time. And stones are big, uh, big weaknesses for Bobby. But he, he surprised me in Bahrain. He looks like he, he trained more that event. He was better than I think, uh, a lot better than last World Strongest Man 2020 example. It was much better in Bahrain than I think if he continue to train and focus on that uh, weaknesses, it will be uh, really hard to beat. Yep. Yeah. Uh, stronger. Yeah. So another thing, I just kind of wanted to rewind a little bit and ask you about: uh, Is there anything interesting about your roots or your upbringing that you think people might find interesting that they don't know? Uh, about me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. But you know, uh, I think uh, what I the biggest difference between me and me, me, a lot of athletes is I always walk very hard you know in in training because when i start strongman you know i i don't have a very big genetic i was just 220 pounds guy 6'3 that's it Mm, and uh, yeah and i walk hard and i grow up my body weight but you know i think it's overfeeding diet since maybe 10 years now (laughs) it's it's not so easy but it's the only means I, i i find to gain maybe five sometimes 10 pounds each year until 300 it was not so hard but after 300 i work really hard but normally i go to compete around 345 350 now uh, i think at 38 i still improving uh, i consider uh, i was better than last year i was stronger too mm-hmm. then i just hope to to not get injured you know i don't have many big injuries in sport and I think uh, because I take the time to stretch, you know, do a lot of mobility work, treatments, all the stuff, you know, if you want to be in top 10, you have to do all the job, you know, just, just, uh, if you, ju- you just do what you want or what you like, it's not enough. That, that That's the point. But, you know, uh, I, when I was young, I living on a dairy farm and my father and grandfather, uh, teach me to walk hard every day all the time then i just repeat it in sport and it's working good for me <laughs> <laughs> so when you were growing up were there did you uh, walk around the farm lifting up weird things and does uh, that make a connection to you now like oh that all makes sense now <laughs> all, all the time when i was young we all the time pick up stones in, in, in the field you know and Sometimes few of my friends come to walk on the farm with me because it was a big farm. Mm-hmm. And it's always a competition. Who will lift the biggest stones, you know, in the field? It was all the time competition like that. And sometimes some of my friend was older than me and stronger. I was not the strongest guy, but I always... 
Now a word about Go Hard Labs. Are you looking for a pre-workout that doesn't make your skin crawl but still gives you some solid energy for your workouts or even just to get through your day when you're exhausted like I am from making all my YouTube content? You should check out Go Hard Labs and use my code MBSM10 to get 10% off of your purchase. They're taking pre-orders now. The product is so popular that they've sold out. Make sure and get your pre-order in so you can get your driven from Go Hard Labs as soon as it becomes available. And again, make sure to use my code MBSM10, stands for My Block Strongest Man, to get your 10% off. And now back to today's topic. Always try to to give my 110%, you know, mm -hmm. all yep. the time. It's what I like when I, I discovered that when I do my first strongman competition. I discover when you think you are empty, it's still gas in the tank. You know, I discovered that on that day, on my first contest, and it's why I, uh, I found in love uh, with uh, the strongman sport, and I never stopped to train after that moment and competing. Mm -hmm. The most important, you know, the like you push yourself re really hard. It's all the time. I, I consider the strongman sport like a competition against yourself. You want to beat your number all the time. It's why you see everybody cheering for other athletes in competition you know it's not so important you you can control the other competition you just can control your performance then if you want to lift more than the other you have to do the work is happy for him you just push the limit higher again and you push everyone to to train harder and it's why strong men level is so high at the moment i think yeah i mean i think that's very unique to strongman right like you have a background in powerlifting and i don't think it's like that in powerlifting from what i hear powerlifters like to be left alone and and focus and strongman everybody's cheering each other on and friendly and it's very i think unique to strongman yeah but powerlifting change i yeah i came from powerlifting you know i start uh, 17 years ago but it was like that also but uh, in some federation now it's very different. Uh, everybody live for himself and don't talk to, to other people. But normally when I organize show in my federation, you know, people are there just for fun. You know, it, never forget that. We do, we do it for passion and mm -hmm. to have fun. Nobody do it for money at the start. Right. Everybody is, have a passion for the strength sport. And the most important, never forget, when you go to compete, you must have fun. You know, because if it's not fun, the people will stop to compete. You understand? Right. It's, it will be fun. And it's always funny to see someone lift a PR or a new record or something like that. You know, the the total of weight is not so important sometimes. It just see someone, you know, never give up and push him very hard. The, the weight is not so important. It will put me also because I see this guy maybe weaker than me, you know, but he give all his art to the to the work on the lift. I cannot stay sit and be lazy, you know. I have to 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 crank myself and and do the same. You know, it's why I, I like have some uh, training partner like that. OK, they are not on international level. Some of them just start in the sport. But some of them have big, big courage and they push uh, the body all the time. Then I need to train on that man, on that manner also, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. By the way, like when we're all done here, give me all their information. We'll be sure to promote them as well. Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, that's interesting. What was, So when you, when you first started Strongman, what was the event that really got your attention that you said, I really would love to do that? Yeah, when I my, on my first contest, okay, it was three qualification events. It was arm over arm pool, uh, car deadlift, and tire flip. And my best result was on the arm over arm. I was a young boy, 22 years old, you know, maybe 220 pounds. <laughs> and I beat Dominic Filiu on arm over arm. Wow. It was really, really surprising, and nobody knew me, you know, in strongman sport at that moment. And old people like Hugo Gerard was there. Who, who, who is this guy? <laughs> who, who is this guy? And uh, my training start from there because when I I do my uh, 
first strongman contest I never trained before. I just work on the farm. That's it. You wow. Know? Then I start to train after, and two years after, I was like a pro in the Quebec Cup. Wow. So Arm Over Arm, over arm was a truck or a sled? Yeah, yeah a truck. <laughs> we, pull a, we pull a truck in that moment inside an arena. And uh, it lo- the truck looked really huge, but I never watched the truck. You know, I just pulled the rope and I never stopped until the, the whistle. And I think we are on, on 30 athletes, just 10 finish. And I finished the, the truck. You know, I, I, I was not very strong because I have no training, but I have good hands and good lower back power. Then it was enough to pull that truck, you know. And you, I, I, and my cardio was also really good, maybe a lot better than now. <laughs> For arm over arm, as soon as you realize that it's a full body movement, if the other yeah. people don't realize you have an edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, the arm over arm is uh, when it's very heavy. It's just a grip event, in my opinion. Technique is not very important. You know, the the end power will decide who who will be the the strongest. Sometimes, it's just if it's light. Okay, the technique and the the all body power can count, but uh, in fact, it's just a grip event normally. Interesting, interesting. You mentioned tire flip as well. Don't you have a world record for tire flips? Yes, I did the world record. It's a Guinness record I did in the Arnold Classic. It was a, it was a 650 kilo tire, then 14, 1,400 pounds, a little bit more, I think. It's, it was very heavy, but you know, it's not about the weight. It's more about the size because few okay. guys try to flip, but they are not enough longest long arm to catch the tire it was very wide and uh, all the athletes was there competing in the honor and finally nobody decided to, to try because the thing is too dangerous then i do four reps with that tire i have no practice they bring the tire just before i start the even oh when I thought that, that tire coming oh shit. <laughs> what, what is that it will be hard and everybody say no no it's not possible it's not possible just Zidrun has said to me oh i think you, you can do you can do no problem <laughs> and finally you know it's a big crowd in arnold classic i don't know how many people was there but it was full just after the i think it was a circus dumbbell before mm-hmm. and i did finally four reps but it was very very hard one of the hardest thing I did in my career. I'm sure. I mean, you said 600 kilo. For people that are not on a world class level, 600 pounds is a lot <laughs> for a time. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it was really hard. You know, just uh, because I can flip in one motion because uh, it was too high. The tire is over two meters tall and it's very wide. Then I need to put on my legs and walk with my arms under, you know. Yeah. The, day, the day after, my legs was total blue. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah oh it, was, it, was, uh, it was not easy. But tire flip was all the time one of my best even. And in the past, when I compete in Hugo Gerard contest, you know, from 2006 to 2013, mm-hmm. 14, we all the time have tire flip for 100 feet in wow. each competition. It was really good for cardio, but you need to train us also that event. And it was... Like 100 feet is like 13 flip. Is it really? Wow. Yes, it's not easy. You know, I see many guys from other countries coming to compete in Canada. And I, I think just uh, Brian Shaw finished it. Many guys, famous guy, tried this tire for 100 feet and nobody finished. Wow. Not easy. You were talking about a big crowd. Do you feed off the energy of the crowd? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think this year the energy of the crowd missed me a little bit. <laughs> There's no crowd in any contest, but I think at the end it's the same result because everybody is fighting for points and we compete since many years. You know, it changed almost nothing, but you all the time remember when you compete in the front of a big crowd. I will remember like Manchester 2017, long time, I think. Like, 11,000 people in the arena when I did the record deadlift on the 400 kilo for reps. The the noise of that crowd is hard to describe, you know. I and can I will, imagine. Yes, I will remember that uh, all my life, for sure. Yeah. You know, and uh, 
I just hope the crowd will come back very soon. But uh, the, the, the good thing is the, the fan can watch on streaming, on TV, on the internet, the, the contests. And the most important for the athlete is we, we can compete is the most important, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, how, so how much impact do you think uh, the Shaw Classic kind of added to that and giving you another extra opportunity to compete where you might not have had so many opportunities? Oh, it was really good. You know, Brian, I have this project since long time to organize something uh, for the athletes. But last year it was... Uh, Exceptional, exceptional. He worked really hard to put uh, that show in place. It was a good idea too to sell the show on the internet. You know, they give to the athlete double of the the starting prize money. The, the, oh wow! Yeah, it's supposed to be twenty five. Like Brian put twenty five from his pocket on the table. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we had another twenty five with the streaming. You know, it oh, was that's great. For athlete. Okay. Because uh, but it was good money for everyone. Well, you know, last place was over three thousand dollars. I saw that. Yeah, yeah you can't. That. I never see that in any contest. You know, all oh. the classic last place is two thousand. Is it really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Then, Brian, Brian deserves a ton of credit for sure. Oh yes, so, no doubt about it. Uh, of course, and he gave his prize money at least. You know, mm -hmm. but you know, Brian. Okay, you can say Brian have the money to do this now, but he. He don't need to do what he want to do for the right. sport and for the athlete. It was really, really good organization also in that competition. And for the athlete, it was really appreciated because few guys make almost no money, you know, last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we got paid in the same week. It's also exceptional because we all... Really? Wow, that's great. Yes, a lot faster than World Strongest Men. A lot. And, uh, you know, I, I make more money in shot last six than World Strongest Men last year. Then, Interesting. Uh, and it's supposed to be uh, like a small show. But finally, I think shot last six uh, will be a very big show this year. Uh, they announce a big events, big money also. Uh, it's very interesting for, for the athlete. You know, something organized by an athlete for the athletes is different. For but sure. uh, for Brian, I, I see so many people... You know, because the people don't know what is organizing a show. I organize show in Canada and I compete in show too. It's much, much easier to be just an athlete. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> you, <yeah. laughs> you have to organize and compete. Oh, shit. It's a lot of job. It's, it's much, much harder. Then it's not a very big advantage for Brian. You know, th this guy work very hard to organize. And this year, it will, it will be bigger. It will be harder for him again. <laughs> okay, you have to choose the event. Maybe you know some equipment. But if you have just to compete, you sleep much, much better than him. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there's uh, last minute things like is the platform set up correctly and all that kind of thing. Like, I'm sure he doesn't sleep very much uh, yeah. leading up to those competitions. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, it was not easy last year with the pandemic situation to to bring everybody to, to the competition. But at, at the end, it was a really, really good result. And uh, he also need to to uh, to pose the competition like it, one day later. Because in the mountain, you know, you have no no connection there. The phone mm -hmm. not working. It's not possible to like uh, yep. the, the the show. But at the end, everybody can watch the show uh, inside 24 hours. Then is the good thing. And uh, the answer from the fan was just exceptional. And oh, I yeah. think all the athletes appreciate that. And you see, this year the lineup is bigger. It's because it's, it was very good event. And every uh, all the best athletes in the world want to to do this show. Yeah, I think he has uh, what is it, seventeen athletes this year? Yeah, something like that. Something over fifteen. He said to me, then all the best guy will be there, and everybody will compete. Since like it's uh, eight events last year, was six. Mm -hmm. Then you know, on eight events, uh, I think the winner of shot last year can be considered uh, the strongest guy in the world too. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's still over two days, right? Yeah, over two days. And last year, it was much, much harder than World Strongest Man final. Oh, you really? Know, after World Strongest Man, you know, I feel almost like just after a training. But after the shot last week, I was total broken. You know, <laughs> the, the day one was very hard. You know, max log, okay, it's not so bad. But 
500 kilo yoke and a big frame medley. Uh, it, it will be hard. You see, Terry Owens was injured on the yoke. I think he cannot lift the right. the frame. Then you pull out one guy, and everybody the 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 next morning was total broke. You know, yoke and frame. The frame was 400 kilo. It, it's not easy. You know, no it was. A lot heavier than War Strongest Man. You know, in War Strongest Man, we have few events not so hard. You know, Hercules all done take you some energy. You know, so it's just about grip. It's almost a rest event. But the shot classic was heavier and uh, much harder. And I saw the events of this year. It will be not easier in 2021. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking of Hercules, I think you won the Hercules hold at World Strongest Man. Do you do, uh, sp- like, do you have Hercules in your gym? How do you train that? I have. I have exactly the same setup. We have two setups in Canada. We have the pillars. It's the same than World Strongest Man. But they are harder than uh, the setup in World Strongest Man. I think in World Strongest Man is around 160 kilo. And my pillars is 180. It's a little bit heavier. But you do. Uh, I did like three sets of 50 seconds at home. Then when he released the weight in World Strongest Man, I asked to Gregor, okay, you can release the weight. Uh, <laughs> okay, but, okay. It was much easier in World Strongest Man. And we have also the setup with cars. We have two cars with ramp. Oh, those setup is like 450 each end. Normally. Yeah, that sounds brutal. Wow. It's very hard. Normally, like the... The winning time is like around 30 seconds. Okay. But it's always one of my favorite events. In the past, it was not. But I train, you know, because in Hugo Gerard competition, you have a lot of grip events all the time. Wheelbarrow, Hercules, Big Farmers, Arm Over Arm, all the time. Okay. Then I work my grip during many, many, many years. Then now is one of my biggest strong points. If you want, then when I go to this event in Warsaw against Men this year, I have no doubt I can win it easy. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so the other thing I was wondering about the Shaw Classic, did the altitude uh, affect any of the yourself or anybody else? Like how yeah, much yeah. of an effect did it have? Uh, you know, when we compete the first day, it was in Brian home. Mm-hmm. It was lower. We see no difference. Okay, But when we go in the mountain, it's like... 8,000 feet or something. Okay. Oh, shit. On the deadlift, you don't feel it. Okay. But on the dumbbell for reps, it's a fitness event. Oh, it's why you see many guys taking oxygen. It's like you, it's like you have no cardio. It's very, very different. And on the stones, uh, I think maybe I, I like, I I have, after I have more time to rest between dumbbell and stones, then I almost not feel on stone. But on the dumbbell, it was horrible. It's maybe why uh, just uh, two, three reps on most each guy. I think I did four and I came in third. Mm-hmm. It's very surprising, but it was much, much harder to recover during the event. It was much, much harder. The attitude is a uh, is big difference. Maybe an advantage for Brian because Brian uh, trained there sometimes, but uh, of course it's much harder. But you know, it's the same situation for all athletes, yeah, especially on the dumbbell. Well, Brian is exceptional with dumbbell to begin with, but I think his, his technique is interesting too because he switched hands and not everybody did that, so he must be training both arms on dumbbell, which I would imagine is an advantage. One arm's resting while the other one's doing the next rep. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think it's not so important. Brian used that technique of both ends because I think in 2012, when he broke his bicep, he started to train with the other ends, you know? I see. Then now it's similar for each side. But, uh, you know, dumbbell press is more leg drive and whole body power movement. Yeah. It's not just about the shoulder. Then mm-hmm. for me, it's changed nothing. It's changed nothing. And just few guys do it switching the arms but i think it's better to do all lift with the the same you see novikov beat him with just yeah. the right arm you know true, true. it's more about leg drive and technique it's not a yeah. proper press movement I've, I've actually learned quite a bit about that because you know i just i don't compete i just play around in the garage but i like uh, i have the fat grip so i just use a fat grip on a regular uh, dumbbell and 
you know, trying to trying to get the technique down. And I've spoken to a couple pros. So Anthony San Lorenzo is 105 kg pro. He gave me some tips and uh, Leifa Engels gave me some tips. And so it is you learn when you're really trying to do it the right way, how much the technique matters and um, how it's a lot less of an upper uh, shoulder and upper body movement than you think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, you know, I placed this event in the technical movement, like Atlas Stone, Tire Flip, Throwing, and Dumbbell. It's not a press event, it's a technical event. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. So, another thing I was wondering, kind of just to flip back to childhood a little bit, did you have a hero growing up, and has that changed today? Uh, when I grew up, you know, when I was young, I was a big fan of wrestling. Me too. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, I, my, I think Andre the Giant was uh, very important for me. You know, I, I read his book, I watch his biography like a thousand times. You know, like yeah. I, I know all about Andre the Giant. You know, see a big a big guy like that. You know, is almost not human. Uh, it was also a big star, you know, in that time. I think in the 80s, it was maybe the the most famous guy on the planet because he, he traveled everywhere. Everybody knows who is Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. And I was very uh, impressed. And, uh, and, you know, I did a podcast like a few, few weeks ago and someone was asked me if you, uh, you can like speak with someone who is dead or not, uh, who, who you choose. And I chose Andre the Giant for sure, because you have many story about this guy is almost, it's like a myth, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Andre the Giant. Then when I was young, I always watched his stuff from this guy. And about Strongman, I was very, very impressed by Bill Kazmaier. You know, I remember this old Strongman competition when I, I watched that. I always, you know, you see his eyes, I was, always crazy you know when you go to to compete and how he's strong also also uh, john paul sigmarson also uh, inspired me a lot in that time but uh, you know you those guys are like john paul and andre the giant are passed away now but uh, it was fun to meet bill in many war strongest men contests and talk with him it was a big thing for me you know, when you can uh, meet this guy, you know, you see perform like 30 years ago. It was like your idol. Yeah, uh, it was a big moment for me. And I, I have a lot of respect for for those guys. Yeah, I've, I've heard some interviews with Bill. And not only was he uh, so driven and powerful, he's really smart, too. Like he's yeah. just he's, he's so uh, his his interviews are just captivating. Yeah, he have also many good stories to, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to discuss uh, around breakfast. Sometimes it's, it's very funny to to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we'll we'll, uh, we'll keep that in the back burner for next time. Yes, it's better. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But yeah, Andre the Giant had some great stories. He he was doing some strongman type stuff. He has a car flipping story. Uh, I'm sure you know it. That that legend goes. I think there were four guys in the car when he flipped it. Yeah, he flipped the car, a drink, one hundred six beer in <laughs> one night. Yeah, uh, many stories like that. But uh, the the most impressive was the size of this guy and how he was a good guy. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a good friend to to Andre, and he talked about him like uh, the most generous guy he knows. Yeah. And uh, this guy was all the time like uh, smiling yeah, because he suffered a lot. You know, he have pain everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's why he drinks so much alcohol. You know, because he uh -huh. has so much pain. But it was all the time like a gentle guy, and he never like refused to talk with the fans. And uh, also Terry Todd said it was very hard for him because never you have never the, the the chance to be alone somewhere and relax all right. the time somebody hit him or pull on his arm and want a photo want to talk with him want to ask something want to touch him it was incredible all the people was 
like impressed by Andre, and it's not possible for him to just walk away on the street, you know. Right, right. Yes, and and on top of that, everything the world was just too small for him. He wrestled in Japan a lot, and things are even smaller in Japan. I mean, I just can't imagine how uncomfortable that must have been. Yeah, Terry Todd said it's like uh, it's like a normal guy try to live in a doll house, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, for uh, sure. It's, it's you, crazy. nothing was made for him at seven foot four and like 500 pounds more it's uh, it was very hard you know he traveled around the world in plane and the plane in the 70s and the 80s was not like today right and till today it's small you know? <laughs> <laughs> then uh oh, it's a very special life uh, the this guy have and uh uh, for me, you know, it's a big uh, idol from uh, when I was a child. Yeah, same here, same here. And uh, Hulk Hogan still tells this story all the time. He says, you know, he he made me. You know, it's it's because of Andre's generosity that I'm anything. Because the uh, in wrestling they call it the passing of the torch. And so the passing of the torch was when Hulk Hogan slammed Andre. And so. Hulk Hogan always tells the story. He says, you know, I'm a big, strong guy, but if he didn't want me to slam him, I wouldn't be able to. Like, he, he made my career, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He have, you know, at that moment, he said, Andre, I have the power to push you on the top, you know, and launch your career. And he yeah. made it for him. It's why Hulk Hogan have big, big respect. He said he's like his, his older brother. Or so, yep. something like that. He was very emotional when it, he talked about Andre. He was also his idol, you know. When yeah. he was young, he, I think he said he, he he saw the the giant for the first time he was twelve years old. Oh wow! <laughs> I think for him, go to a wrestling match maybe twenty years later was uh, something big for him, and I think he's very 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 respectful from uh, about Andre the Giant. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I was wondering, JF, who was who is your favorite competitor you've ever competed with for for whatever reason, whether they make you uh, try harder or you just like their personality? Who's your your favorite guy to, that you've ever competed with? Oh, I compete with uh, many guys. Uh, I have the chance to compete with Marius just one time in two thousand eight. And I compete many times also in Champions League, by not just in Champions League, but uh, in big contests also with Zedronas Savikas and I learned a lot from Zedronas uh, because uh, in my first year in Champions League I was I had three contests Champions League Canada Latvia and uh, the final was in Sarajevo in Bosnia mm -hmm. and on the third the three contests I finished second just after Zedronas oh wow and after I asked him how it's possible to become better, like, like you, example. What I need to do, just just answer me, make competition. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And because for him, he said competition was the best training you can do. And I did it. It's why I compete a lot in the past. And it's worked really good for me. Then it's why I, I want to thank him to give me this advice and uh, I also appreciate in 2008 compete with Marius Pozanowski because it's that kind of guy you know he was injured in 2008 and he won the title he was injured in calf in qualification and everybody is talking about uh, Marius have no chance this year with this injury but is that kind of competitor injured a little bit or not he will do what he need to win you know, and Zedruna said also it was uh, very hard to, sorry, to uh, compete against Marius because it's that type of guy. Example, oh, on that day I need nine rep, he will do. He can do this one more rep they need sometime. Uh, Compete with a guy like that is always very hard, but I have a great moment with Zedronas uh, in the past and many guys from uh, Europe when I started Champions League, like Christoph Redzikowski also helped me a lot when I start my my career, Ervin Katona too, this is still good friends, but those guys are stopped and I was really happy to compete with Christoph for his last contest, it was 2019 Glenn Ross team competition mm -hmm. and we won the title. It was the last contest of uh, Christoph. It 
was a big honor for me to to compete for the last time with him. But uh, you know, after a long career, you know the prize money and the, the podium was not so important. Is the the friends and the experience. Yeah. We you remember that, and for me, is the most important. And it's why I want to continue to compete for a few years again. Mm -hmm. And I hope just uh, be able to to follow the the, the young guys. But uh, I really like the the friendship instrument. It's very important for me. I'm sure. Yeah, Champions League is very uh, kind of a well run. Um, it's it's where Ivar's has kind of made his name recently. Ivar Schmuckstellis, right? So it's Champions League is another really cool sort of uh, competition to watch. Yeah, because in the past it was. It, you know, Arnold Circuit will not exist. It was just Columbus. Then Strom and Champions League were the only tournament in the world. Then everybody compete in Champions League in the past, you know. Yeah. Now we have new new contests and a few guys step away in the biggest contest. But uh, still, it's a really good competition there in the Champions League since... Uh, Many years, you know, I started in 2011 in Champions League. I don't remember how many contests I did with those guys, but a lot. And it's always uh, good, good memories about that. Good experience. We visit many countries, many parties also. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So then kind of the other side of the coin, who is a competitor you never got a chance to compete against that you really would, would have loved to? Uh, it's a good question. I would say I ever compete with him, but uh, I would say Hugo Girard at his prime. Okay. But uh, because I compete with Hugo in 2008 in CSM and Canada's Strongest Man, mm -hmm. but he got injured and he pulled out from the contest and after he stopped his career. Then I was not in the good level to compete with uh, Hugo in real big competition you know uh, it's why I'm, i won the most but uh, unfortunately you was injured too much and uh, in 2008 you have to to stop the the storm and sport hmm. that's a shame yeah he was he was great to watch as well so um i was also wondering we're going to be wrapping up here soon but i was wondering outside of strength training what other hobbies do you have Oof, not so much hobbies, but uh, here at home I have uh, horses, mm. little, little farm. I have uh, I'll have a lot of wood too, then <laughs> lot of work to do. We just moved in this place like two months ago. Okay. Then I have a lot of job uh, at home, but uh, you know my biggest hobby, I like to go to eat in restaurant, but they nice. are closed. They are closed <laughs> <laughs> since since six months almost. Then uh, I just hope I go back to restaurant soon. But uh, well, sometimes I play cards with uh, with friends. But you know, since we are confined at home, we we don't play cards since long time now. But I just hope that the world will be the same than ever than ever uh, it was before. Uh, but I think it will be never be like before. It's what I think. Right then right. uh, I, I, I don't know but i don't have many many hobbies now it's all about training and work <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can imagine yeah. so i'm i'm just like very very excited that you were able to join me this evening this has been a wonderful time for me i learned a whole lot about you and i think we should just wrap up by telling everybody how they can follow you how they can kind of keep in touch and uh and follow all the uh wonderful things that are to come for you yeah, but people can follow me on Facebook and Instagram all the time. But uh, it will be a, a new thing. I will be launch my YouTube channel very soon. Mm. It will be a French strongman channel because a lot of people ask me some content strongman, you know, uh, in French. Then I will do in French with subtitle for sure. Then it will be also uh, possible to to post some video on that with the YouTube before War Strongest Man, you know, my road to the War Strongest Man to 21. I want to work with a few famous guys here in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk also with my friend uh, Dave and Larat 
Pro-Am wrestler. He's oh, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan. Yes, uh, I'm a big fan. Believe me not, that was <laughs> one. Then uh, maybe it will help me to grow my YouTube channel. But I have a lot of good contents to bring to you. Because, you know, I, in the past, I don't spend many times on social media. I don't post so much because, uh, you know, I'm very busy with organization and work. And, uh, you know, I put all my effort 100% all the time on my training and my diet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of stuff to do. But uh, the YouTube channel uh, will be launched soon. Yeah, definitely keep me in the loop there. You have a subscriber for sure. And if you want any uh, editing tips, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, JF. Again, I'm very, very uh, happy that you were able to join. And uh, we had a great discussion and i look forward to uh, talking again after your next competition yes thank you for inviting <laughs> all righty take care have a good evening thanks you too so if you like this video and haven't done so yet please consider subscribing using that button right there and also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there this one is the one that youtube thinks that you will like the best and this one is the one that i think you will like the best as always share this with everyone and until next time ciao homie